Good evening, everyone. I am really, really happy today to announce INS Super Speciality DN Clinical Hemat Rank 1, Dr. Ibrahim Zia Rahim. And he's in front of us. And I'm really, really happy that this time the first, second, and third in DM Clinical Hemat are from now. So, welcome to the forum, Dr. Ibrahim. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. So, Ibrahim, can you let, let us know our audience as to uh, where you did your under graduation from, post graduation from? Can you introduce yourself? So, my name is Dr. Ibrahim Zia Rahim, and I did my undergraduation from GMC Nagpur, and I did my post graduation from IGMC Nagpur, where I also completed my SRSH. And uh, along with that, I also did my MRCP with my SRC. And uh, now I've sat for the AIMS exam and hopefully I'll go for DM Hemat in AIMS. And why, why hematology? You know, gastro is a very lucrative field. Cardiology is a very lucrative field. Why hem hematology? Uh, I think my, uh, my drive, uh, my uh, attraction towards medicine has always been diagnostics. And so... Uh, interventional branches never really excited me to be very honest i was more into the cerebral aspect of medicine so i believe that i wanted a branch which kept me close to core medicine and uh, when i was in my uh, second year then uh, i uh, sat for hematology quiz and uh, we won the state rounds and we came uh, second in the zonals and from just from uh, that time as well i just was very interested in hematology i used to see hematology in all our uh, cases in uh, my hospital, like we don't really have a very strong hematology backup in our hospital, but I would try and find hematological aspects in all cases as and much uh, as I could. So that was uh, good for me. And actually, being from a uh, relatively uh, resource, uh, I wouldn't say deprived, but not as a resource uh, full place, it uh, allowed me to study and uh, try to pick up hematological clues, even when we did not have a lot of diagnostic backup. So that just uh, reinforced my interest in the subject. And uh, so I had a bit of a conundrum whether I want to do a DEM or not. That's why I went through the MRC route. But eventually I felt that uh, hematology was my calling. So I sat for the exam. It was my first attempt. And then so yeah. From MD to MRCP and concomitantly doing DEM. It must have been a tough journey for sure. So, you know, many students ask if, uh, Juggling between work, senior residency, MD, and then simultaneously studying for DM, it's a bit difficult. It's not, not a cakewalk. So how did you juggle between your work and your routine studies? How many hours per day you used to spend for studies? I uh, actually have never really counted hours when I am studying. So I can't give you a very good answer. But uh, I, uh, to be very honest, I started my prep in the last two months. It's very seriously actually in the last one month but uh, then i could i would just study as and when i would get the time uh you could average it out to four or five hours maybe six hours uh but yeah so if you have interest you just take out time so i never really counted hours but uh my hospital was very supportive so they 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 never really overburdened us with work so we had ample time to study and uh also actually since at the end of the day you're studying medicine and all of that so reading for MRCPA also allowed me to stay close to core medicine. So I didn't really uh, read medicine per se for my INI exam. I focused uh, more on hematology. Uh, almost entirely I focused on hematology. I was relatively confident about my medicine background. So I put it on the back burner and I uh, stuck to I stuck to marrow. I stuck to the notes. I stuck to the videos. And I just watched them uh, religiously and uh, read the notes religiously. I tried to finish two to three uh, revisions of the notes in the time I had. And I feel that was the biggest factor. Uh, because uh, being very honest, I cannot remember more than maybe three, four questions that were not covered in the notes of hematology. They were that uh, extensive. Uh, so I believe that was the key, that just sticking to the notes and uh, I really did not consult many uh, hematology textbooks. I had read them a bit during my quiz preparation. So I knew a little bit about it. But uh, when actually preparing for the exam, I strictly stuck to the notes. I did not refer to any uh, textbooks per se. For the interview, I did a little bit of hematology, quest, uh, the image banks. But other than that, the notes were more than sufficient. So if you have to label in one, two, and three, your top three 
sources for preparation they will be uh i just have to <laughs> my first is maro and the second would be the ash image banks that's it i did not do anything else oh that's nice so obviously you must have re uh, read a lot of hematology for your quiz during your second year and third year yes that must have helped you a lot when you, when yeah. you started your yes I, I i had some of a backup and I used to go back to the books. I used to go back to Harrison all the time because uh, it is a bit volatile. So I had uh, multiple readings of those uh, topics from Harrison. So I did not pick it up in during the last preparation phase. Uh, so I had a feeling that if something came from Harrison, I would get it. So that's why I stuck to the notes. Right. And you know, with respect to the level of difficulty of the theory exam, this was a mixed bag of some factual questions, yeah. some odd questions, some some you know uh, conceptual questions what was your take on it and you know how many questions did you attempt i attempted i did not actually attempt uh all of them i attempted 70 questions i believe i left at around 10 questions uh mm -hmm. but to be fairly honest it was not a very difficult exam you no know, difficulty i would say was moderate uh some questions were actually in fact easy uh like you wouldn't expect it from i and i but there was the, those questions and i said um if you uh, do your notes thoroughly and if you whatever source you are reading, if you do it thoroughly, uh, in my case, it was Maro. So it, it was sufficient. I wouldn't say they had asked really anything out of the ordinary or you know, like studies or a lot of uh, very recent advances. There were a few questions on recent drugs, but other than that, it was fairly standard. Even the medicine part, I believe, was fairly standard, something you would expect. I don't think the difficulty was too high. Right. So 70 out of 80, which means usually I hear 75, 76, 78. You are one of those few candidates whom I hear 70, which means whatever you answered was bang on and nothing wrong. That's good. Uh, lastly, you know, be before the step two exam happens, we do have a webinar on the step two preparation. Uh, so did that help you and, and how did it help you in what way for your step two? Uh, it was uh, immensely helpful. I, I believe most importantly, the script uh, that you had given us, how they would approach the uh, interview, that was uh, perfect. It was exactly how it went. They would ask about your uh, where you're from and what cases you have seen, and then they will elaborate on that only. Like I, I remember you had said that stick to a case in your mind and read about it, and that is what they'll ask. And in fact, that is what happened. So the cases I told them, that is the questions they asked on. There are a few spotters uh, which you had shown us. Uh, so I think it was immensely helpful. Uh, more than anything, I think that there's a real uh, some anxiety uh, before the interview, just uh, because it's unknown. I think that you helped uh, alleviate very well uh, on how it will be, how it will happen. Uh, you had said that don't worry about studies, don't worry about any recent uh, you know uh, research. They won't ask about it, and they did not. So it was a it was good interview and I think the the webinar you had kept really helped. Yes, I remember during my entrance I was worried that they would ask about all the possible trials under the sun. Yes, and I had rectified possibly almost all of them, but none of them were useful. Exactly. It just boils down to tell as you actually pent out that the fear of unknown will always be there unless you overcome. Right, and you know, lastly, Ibrahim, before we. Day. Any message for your future aspirants who are wishing or who wish to pursue DM clinical hematology? How difficult it is and how do they go about it? Uh, I would just say uh, read hematology in your uh, post graduation days because uh, means uh, most hospitals might not have a very good hematology uh, infrastructure. So you are the one who, who has to keep yourself connected to the subject. Because otherwise you'll just end up treating anemia with hematinics and your MD will uh, be home. So stick, keep yourself close to uh, hematology in your residency. And when you're preparing, don't really worry about it. Uh, just study religiously for a few months. But when you do study, study religiously. And I think you should be able to crack it. Excellent. So hearing it from the numero, you know, it's, it appears that it's quite simple and it actually is simple and it doesn't seem as difficult that it might appear to be. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Ibrahim for your time today. Thank you.
so much sir yeah. i would like Thank to you. just take a moment uh, you, that your uh, i mean uh, i can't thank you enough for the notes for the videos they were immense and uh, if anything i think the biggest credit uh, for this would go to you and the information you put forward in the app so i my biggest thanks to you, uh, is to you not at all <laughs> i'm glad and or we are helping few candidates who wish to enter this beautiful field okay thank you so much so thank you ibrahim and hopefully we will meet sometime soon yes we'll cross our paths sometime soon okay yes, sir. thank you thank so you much.